Everybody's here tonight for our Senior Bulldog Cafe. Tonight our subject is balancing your academics, your job, and your social. And we are so excited to have Miss Michael here and Miss Raymond from John Harden to help us get started on this great topic. So let's go. So each of you should have a copy and a pen has been given to you. So all you have to do is read each statement and you are going to number whichever statement that you agree with is Don't most like you, the four, on the little and then three, so two, and then the last one that you think is the least like you is a one. And you're going to do that for each question. Yes, you're going to reuse the number. So for each one, you're going to go through and do that. So four is the one that's most like you, one is the one that is least like you, and then you fill in in the middle. Oh, there's four under it. Uh-huh, yeah. mm -hmm. rank them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's okay. All right. That's okay. It's after school hours. Directions are hard. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know my name anymore, so... Starbucks? No. Is it free? No. Well then, no, I will not be getting one of no, those. Although my brother is trying to get back on at Starbucks. Yeah. Huh? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, your brother's trying to get back <laughs> okay. on at Starbucks. You said yes. I didn't know if that was like a, I didn't hear you, but I'm going to pretend I did think. No, I did. <clears throat> did y'all hear how to fill this out? So, which are, <laughs> that's fair. Whichever one is most like you, you're going to put a four next to. Whichever one is least like you, you're going to put a one. And then obviously the ones in between are two or three. Okay. Yeah. You're going to do it for all of them. Um, you got, I think, my original, so yours isn't double sided. Don't take it personally. I'm just not good at counting. <laughs> I am not a math teacher. Do you even know who I am? That was confident, but yes, you're right. <laughs> it's been a hot minute. There will be some mild math involved. I will not complete the math for you, but your calculator on your phone can. It took me three tries to do my own math, so it's okay if it takes you a little while. Uh, it is uh, not. Oh. No. Mm -mm. I thought I could come up with something clever, Simple but I couldn't. Simple addition would be correct. I'm also screwed. <laughs> I gotta go suddenly. You have a calculator on your phone. No, I don't. I also I have, have the. What's the phone? I've never heard of that. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Not only our academic life, but our social and our job. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, most of the kids. One of the biggest reasons why they were saying that they could or could not attend an evening meeting was because they all work. I was supposed to work today. I was like, I want to come to one of these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. I want to work but day. everyone's working, everyone's uh, going to school, and you're also planning an entire life in front of you as, as a senior. So, a lot going on. All right, so when you get to the end, you're gonna get a beautiful chart that looks like this but doesn't have numbers in it, okay? So number one is question one, and you're gonna put how you ranked letter A, B, C, and D, and you're just gonna go through that for each one. It is okay if you messed up. It took me a second to mm -hmm. figure this out too. Three tries. Because <clears throat> there's numbers and colors and I had to turn a page. Please. <laughs> I have a question. For, okay, so for 1A, I would put like 4. So you would there. put, yep, 4, 3, whatever, okay, whatever, whatever. Got it. All right. Yes. So once you finish adding up your totals, you'll figure out what color you are. Okay, so A is going to be 
gold, B is orange, so on, so on, right? So whatever your highest total is, that's what your primary color is. Your second highest is your secondary color. <laughs> okay, so once you finish with, finish with the math, All right, which you figure one out you which your one's highest your highest. Number? And then... C. All right, so you're a blue. So the colors are A is orange, B is green, C is blue, and D is gold. So, so whichever one you have the highest total in, that's your primary your color, second. and whichever one is so the second highest, your highest, that's your secondary so blue, color. And then what was your second highest? A. A, so orange. And then you can read the little sheet to kind of see what that color might kind of say about you. You're welcome, of course. Are all your numbers pretty close together? Uh, yeah, these have all the most of the fours and threes. And what about your totals? Um, Thirty-five and thirty-one. Okay, so they're very, very close. Mm -hmm. My all my numbers were within like three of each other. What, everything. Yes. You fit into all the colors. I guess so. <laughs> yes. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes. What that's did you fun. end up with? All right. Blue and orange. Lots of blues. Did she already talk to you about it? I've encountered like the five colors. blues okay, today. Perfect. So once you get to the end where you've added up your numbers, um, we can tell you what color those numbers represent, and then you can read the little sheet oh. on your table <laughs> that will tell you kind of what those colors represent yes. personality-wise. A, B, C, D. We can go on from there. Okay. Yep. I think I might be Okay. So your highest is this one? All right, so you're an orange as your first color, and your second color, is that a 20? Do you feel like blue accurately exactly. represents you? Yeah. I felt pretty called out by this, I'm not gonna lie. So then, blue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What you got? I got orange. Nice. Do you feel like it's accurate? That's okay. Yeah. It's a beautiful place yeah. to live. <laughs> What's your number two? Like your second color. Oh, um, okay. All right, so. So that may yeah. be where those traits kind of are, is on the blue, if you're not as bold. Close call. It can be both. Orange. So then my first one. So it's orange, green, blue, gold. That's okay. <gasps> what um, are you? Green and then blue. Oh. Um, it makes more sense. I was going to say. Whose child is so that? Then I just one. Which one do I get this one? You're a green? Apparently. <gasps> Hooray. Just a There's not been a single green yet. Yes. Orange, Wait. Green, blue, orange, green, blue, gold? Yes. Then I'm green. No, you, you did it right. All right, so do we think our colors match up with who we are? Sort of, eh? Mm -hmm. That was an agreement. That was an agreement, got you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so raise your hand if you got blue. Nice, I'm a blue, blue power, okay, go us. All right, what about gold? Did anyone get gold? Was it, you got gold as a second, right? Okay, anyone else get gold? I think gold is the least common one. Mm -hmm. um, I gave this in a class last year, and only I think three people got gold out of like a 30 person class, so it's not very common. What about um, orange? One, two, three. Some right. oranges. So a couple oranges. Cool. And then the last color, obviously, is green. So who got green? I'm a green. Nice. You two green people. Lone greens. Nice. So um, part of the reason why we did a color inventory. Um, that was also like a little bit of a personality test, is if you can kind of see what you're really good at or where you strive, um, you can also kind of see where your downfalls are, and then you can kind of fill in those gaps um, in different ways. So you can talk for a second. So I did a little bit of snooping into each personality type to try to figure out tips for your specific personality type when it comes to work-life balance. Um, I know when I was a senior, when I graduated from John Harden myself, as a green, I was overwhelmed. 
because I felt like there was so much to do. There was so much life happening all at once. So this would have been super helpful for me. Um, so I'm super glad you guys came. So we didn't have any golds, right? No golds? Only okay. second. Only second. My second is gold. So whose second was gold? I appreciate you. So for those gold traits, what was your second? A is orange. 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 Yeah, A is orange. I'm sorry if I told you wrong. That was definitely my fault. Okay, so for gold traits, golds are really solid, right? So gold should create checklists and set aside time for work and separate time for play. So the thing with golds is if you have a lot of gold traits, if you had a high number in gold, you're going to be really, really committed to work and not so committed to play. So it's important to make time for that. Um, oranges. We had a lot of oranges, right? Okay. So oranges are the action color. So usually orange people are really, really lively um, and they don't like routine. So it's hard whenever you come out of high school and you have the same classes every day if you're going to college or the same work schedule every week um, and you need variety, right? So for oranges, it's really important to change up your daily tasks and routines. So even if you have a set work schedule or a set class schedule or things are kind of seeming monotonous. Um, changing up what you do in between those monotonous tasks can be really helpful for your mental health. Additionally, I think this is confirmed based on what I've seen of the oranges here, making time and space for movement and fun is really important <laughs> because usually our oranges are um, the fidgety people. So if you end up in an office or you end up in a really long class, you're gonna be like, jumping out of your skin, right? I think some of the oranges are a little triggered. Hey. Um, <laughs> so it's really, really helpful to make time and space for that because it's important for you, right? And it's very easy to forget. Also, and this kind of goes for everybody, it's okay to reward yourself with spontaneity. So a lot of, a lot of times when you move into the adult world, um, being impulsive is a bad thing right? But if it's something that's important to you, you like being spontaneous, too much continuity in your daily life can be um, stifling a little bit, make time for spontaneity. Take a weekend trip, go hiking with your friends, right? Make space for that part of yourself because it's still important. Um, and make sure you find activities that allow for creativity, like doodling. Make time for your art. Make time for all of these things because it's still important. Right, and it's very easy in the adult world to kind of stifle those parts of yourself as an orange, and that's not fair. There should still be space for that all the time. And then blues, who are my blues? Blues, and Miss Snow is a blue too. Um, so blues need to make time to plan in small increments so that the blue does not get overwhelmed. Okay, <laughs> okay. so planning things a little bit of a, at a time can be really, really helpful. Additionally, setting firm boundaries for time um, and personal boundaries. So it's very easy to feel pulled in a lot of different directions as a people-pleasing blue. Um, so making sure you set boundaries. It's okay to tell your friends no. It's okay to tell your job you can't pick up that extra shift. Okay, because it's really important that you don't overwhelm yourself. And as a blue, you wanna make everyone happy a lot of times. Um, so making space for yourself and self-care and being aware of your own boundaries and limits is super important, especially in that first year or two after high school when everything's coming at you all at once. Um, and then make sure you find small ways to help other people. So usually, blues are givers. Okay, you wanna help everyone all the time and this leads to a lot of fatigue. Um, so you can still make time to do that. If you're in college, there are all kinds of ways for you to get involved on campus and help other populations. Um, if you're working in the community or you move away, get involved in small things, but don't stretch yourself too thin. Okay, if helping others is really important to you, make space for that. But remember to have those boundaries. Now my one lone green. So these are my personal tips um, that I use because if I don't have extreme organization, everything's on fire for me. So get a planner or a calendar. And this helps, I think, everybody. Remember that your phones have a lot of functions and having reminders and calendars in your phone is extremely helpful because I will get overwhelmed if there are too many things on like a physical page, right? So if I have it on my phone, it's a little more 
spread out and it helps. Um, also, greens need to be willing to lean on other people. And this goes for everybody. So whenever you leave high school, a lot of times the expectation is uh, you're an adult now. You're doing it all on your own, right? You may be moving out, you may be moving away, you may be starting a new job or starting your education. Um, lean on other people. Look for support, talk to people, especially if you're a very independent kind of person. It's okay to lean on resources. Talk to your family, talk to your friends. If you're going to school, lean on those resources, lean on your colleagues or coworkers. It's really important. I know that we're all supposed to be grown, but I lean on my colleagues every day, right? I think Ms. Michael and Ms. Snow can probably attest to that. We all lean on each other, um, and that's super important. So those are my tips that I found in my very green research that I did. It pretty much sums up the color stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you talk about your other stuff too? What other you stuff? Just, you just worked it all in? Well, I have like other like takeaways, gotcha. but those are like my- Big takeaways? Specific takeaways. All right. So I wrote down just like a couple things that I thought would have helped me when I graduated high school. So let's just start with who's going, who like has a job right after high school that you're gonna go into? Right, one, two-ish, maybe three. All right, what if anybody going to college right after high school? Okay, all of you, delightful. Okay, so I went to college right after high school just out of the expectation that you go to college or like your life will implode, okay? And if you do not do that, everything bad will happen to you, okay? Um, which is not true, it'll all be okay. Um, but I went to college and college for me was way different than my high school experience, but I had to learn to like actually have boundaries and not, you know, have everybody plan everything for me. Um, so the first thing that I did wrong when I went to college is I scheduled myself as many classes as they like legally allowed at my college and then like requested to take more because I thought that was what you did. And then when I went to like, you know, try and do anything fun, I had no energy, nothing left to give to like anything I was invested in. Um, so like, do not think that you have to put all of your stuff in one basket and then just like run with it. So you can still do everything that you still liked doing before um, and just like know how many classes you're taking and what like your impact for that is going to be. Um, I had to learn which works for life and school and like jobs, um, how I study best. So if I like am learning something new at work, like a new type of technology, I have to be hands-on and do it. Um, but the same for like, if I have a new, like if I got a new job, like a new part-time job or something, right? I know that I have to set aside like my own time aside from being at the job to like master it. So for example, like I work at Starbucks part-time, right? I did not learn how to make a caramel macchiato just by being at work. I like went home and like thought randomly throughout the day, how many shots are in this drink? What do I need? So I knew I had to like separate that time to be able to understand it. Um, having friends in the same like major or job is good, right? Like, but if I only have friends that are in my little bubble, then it's really hard to like feel seen in aspects that you don't want to talk to your colleagues all the like all the time about. Um, so like, have people in your like in your corner, but also like in the opposite corner because those people. Um, are gonna like legitimately balance you out um, and help you in that way. Let's see. Oh, scheduling, we talked about a planner. Um, I'm a planner person, but I use my planner for the first four months of the year, and then I put it in the bottom of my bag, and then the rest is kind of just like a dumpster fire on planning stuff. And I know that, like I know where my planner is right now, and I know that I stopped using it about three months ago, okay? And that's why the past three months of my life have been crazy. So I know I have to have a physical planner and my phone, because I use both. So if you're a physical planner person, also have like a digital one. Um, and then one of the things I put like in all caps was sleep schedule, because although you might be like, I really need to go out and hang out with my friends till 4 a.m., but then you have class at 8 a.m. or you have work sometimes at 4 a.m., right? And you're like, it's fine. I can sleep for 27 seconds and then go and just figure it out, okay? It will catch up to you. So plan out a sleep schedule and try and stick to it if you can. And then the last part that I put down 
was be honest with your peers and yourself. So like, if I have these people who I'm like really good friends with, and I tell them that I can always hang out, but I can't, then when I tell them no, I'm gonna feel like I let them down and myself down. So being able to balance like the expectations that others have for you, like if you have a friend who always wants to see you 17 times a week, but you know you can only manage four, tell them, I love that you wanna hang out with me and that's great, but this is what I need for me and then sort of off count it with that. Anything else? Do you have any questions or whatever Ms. Raymond has to talk about? Anything left? Questions? 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 About the sleep schedule thing um, and the counting up. It really does because I like have been getting sleep the entire week and yesterday I went home and I slept for 14 hours. Yes. So it, yeah. But you cannot, let's say I take $10,000 out of my bank account and then I put $3,000 back in. Do I still have the same amount of money? No. So if I sleep 14 hours on one day, but I didn't sleep for six days straight, my bank is still empty, okay? Mm -hmm. So you gotta just work up. You can't always binge sleep. I know. Your body will physically not be able to manage it. But the sleep is good, so binge sleep for now till you find your way to normal right. sleep. Now I know what a normal sleep schedule is, yes. just the fact that I haven't seen it in like three years. Got you, yeah. Also figuring out like how many hours you need to be like a good person. Like I'm a <laughs> five and a half hour sixer. If I get six hours of sleep, I can be kind to others, okay? If I get four hours of sleep, I struggle to be kind to anybody without forcing myself. So figure out like if you're, for example, I know people that they need 10 hours of sleep or they will like punch you in the face. So they need to get their 10 hours. And if you're one of those people, maybe get 10 and a half, offset it. Okay, <laughs> go on the better side. But once you figure out what your time is, then you know you know that you missed two hours here, but you can catch up somewhere else. I got three hours. Three hours of sleep, that's impressive. Yeah, it is. That's what I've been surviving on since But do you want to survive or do you want to thrive? No, I'm good with three hours. Good with three hours, all right. Good with three hours. All right. I'm a five-hour person. You're a five-hour person? I'm a five hour, I'm a five hour. Anything below that, I'm not nice. <laughs> that's okay. So takeaways, um, set boundaries. I mentioned that and so did Ms. Michael. Make sure you're setting boundaries, set limits, whether it's time limits, whether it's personal relationship limits. You're, you are an adult now um, and you are entitled to your own time, right? You're the boss. So if you need a break, take that break. All right, you absolutely deserve it. You guys are all gonna be working hard in whatever you do. So having those limits and boundaries is important you can't do it all you can't please everyone so make sure you're putting yourself first especially at this phase in your life to set yourself up for success um, make sure you're prioritizing what can wait right procrastination is a huge thing um, sometimes you have to all right procrastinating till the last minute on something important is not a great idea but there are times when your mental health your sanity when other things have to be a priority all right so make sure you're prioritizing what can wait um, I always tell my students to eat the frog first and what that means <laughs> is don't actually eat any frogs but the worst task of the day try to get that done first all right it'll get rid of that dread it'll help you conquer the rest of the day because that one thing that you don't want to do is done okay and it's it's a lot better for your mental health I've learned that one the hard way um, and get organized so if, whether it's a planner, whether it's just, if you're a sticky note person, um, whether it's setting reminders in your phone, get organized, make sure you're doing that prioritizing. Um, a thing that I used for like all of my undergrad was I would put my work schedule and my class schedule as a screensaver on my phone because I would get so worked up about what time am I supposed to be somewhere and I would doubt my own understanding of when I was supposed to be somewhere so I could glance at it. That was helpful for me. That might be overwhelming for some people to see what the places you need to be. But as a green, it helps me a lot having that right where I could grab it anytime I needed it. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have. Any questions about anything? Questions about our lives? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Way to prioritize self-care. Yeah, good job. So, uh, I agree.
Hey! But my secondary is blue, and that's a really rough combination. Like, there's really giving and social and loving friends, and then leave me alone. I want to do things by myself. How do I blend that better? Have you ever heard people talk about spoons? Like, having a certain number of spoons? So, like, at the beginning of the day, I have five spoons. Five spoons to give to myself or give to others. Um, I give a spoon to somebody, I give a spoon to somebody, I give a spoon to somebody, I have two spoons left. What do I use those spoons for? Do I use them for myself or do I use them to keep giving? Okay, so think about the amount of spoons you have for a day um, and try to be very conscious of which spoons you need for yourself and which spoons you can give to other people. That's the best way that I can conceptualize it. That's the way I've always, I've, I've always heard it. So you're giving to others and you're saving some for yourself. So just try starting with a certain number of mental spoons. This is how much I can give and this is how much I need for myself. And never go below the number of spoons you need to serve yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I got five. So how do you figure out how many spoons you have? It took trial and error. I started with 10. I was like, all right, 10 spoons. And it's crazy. You don't realize how often you're giving, especially when you're working with people. Um, you're spending a lot of time with your friends when you start studying together or even just doing regular social things. You give a lot of spoons. Um, and so I realized like by five o'clock, I had like two spoons left out of 10. And I was like, this is not, this is not gonna work. I need more spoons. <laughs> And I realized I needed to stop giving so many spoons, so I brought my number of spoons down. I was like, all right, I can give three spoons. I need my two spoons. And if you're a blue, you're going to have more spoons. All right, I'm green and gold, so I can be viewed as, as um, kind of like staunch and maybe a little bit selfish at times because of my very green and gold kind of type A traits. So I only have five spoons. Just experiment with the spoons. I think one of the neat things that this paper tells us, and one of the things that Ms. Michael and uh, Ms. Raymond have shared, they seem to really know themselves. So they're able to do some of this time management and balancing because they really know their inner being, how they work, how they tick. In different stages of our lives, those things change as we mature and our environments change. And I'm very much a blue, you know, but and that's great, and I will give, give, give until I'm empty, but I also know how, what things re-energize me. It's not always sleep. If I come out and I'm in the cafeteria at lunch and I see a few faces, well, all of a sudden I'm, I'm back up. Went in the gym today, I talked to you all. Back up. You know, I went in there for five minutes, I had new energy because I feed off the people, and then, I feel this calming, I feel good. I just enjoy that social interaction and I'm able to uh, re-energize. So I think sometimes knowing some of those uh, things about yourself help develop that balance um, and help figure out which ways, what things will work and what things won't. But I, I really think when you do go off to the next thing, it's easy to think if I don't, if I don't do it exactly this way, I'm going to get in trouble. You're not getting in trouble anymore, unless you get arrested. <laughs> but you're not getting in trouble really anymore because you get to decide now. That's the, that's the big difference. You get to decide your time. You get to decide what feels good, what is enjoyable, what will be um, calm you, what will excite you, what will challenge you. And you have to decide what you want more or less of. I really struggle with that. I give, I want to work all the time, I want to go all the time, I want to be very active. And then my daughter is very good at, I'm home, I'm having coffee, I'm coloring, I'm like, you're what? You know, you're almost 30 years old. <laughs> Get up and do something. But she works all week. She wants to relax on the weekends. She says it's fine, it's fine. She's correct, it is fine. She likes that, it's enjoyable. But I like to get up on Saturday morning at like seven o'clock and start doing. And so, um, you know, you have to begin to know yourself. So I love that you all pointed that out, that each person is different. And the more you begin to know about you, the more you can decide. Because I, I do sometimes give, 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 and then I'm empty. And I forget.
forget I have a St. Bernard poem that I think is too. <laughs> so, well, are you all have ready for me to do some prizes, or do you have sure. some finishing comments? I don't have. No prizes. No. Finishing Thank prizes. For showing up, though. Does anyone have any questions that you're wanting to ask about anything? Open books. English teachers. One thing I would just point out, just because like you are one color, or your paper says you're one color, doesn't mean like you're going to like go forever as that color, or like you have to go home and be like, hey, I'm a blue. I just want to let you know this is exactly who I am, and you cannot say I'm anything else than that. Right? <laughs> this is just like a vague way to put yourself into a category um, to kind of see who you are in one aspect. So there's like probably thousands of personality tests, right? And they all, you could take this test on your best day and your worst day and you'd get a different color, okay? Mm -hmm. So don't take it as like the end all be all, like I'm a blue and I will never be anything but a blue. And I think that that's the same if you take the, like an interest inventory or mm -hmm. like sometimes what, what jobs will be best. I mean, I was supposed to be a farmer working on large machinery. <laughs> <laughs> I obviously didn't do that. Um, so sometimes that day, you were thinking about all these things and, and all, so. But I encourage you, wherever you go next year, really um, think about finding some enjoyable time. We overbook as a, as a whole society. We overbook, um, we overbook doing work, doing things that are stressful. Um, we overstress our lives and uh, I know when I talked to a lot of students in the last few weeks about coming out, coming to, you know, it was, they were working, they were doing this, they were doing their classes. Um, and the other thing um, that Ms. Michael brought up, where she took all those extra classes. I don't know one student that wants to graduate early from college, so take your time. You pay for each class, whether you take them all on one semester or whether you spread it out, but you need that time to find your way. You need all four of those years. You may need three more for graduate school. Enjoy that time to find who you are, to grow. Um, there's no need to rush through any of the next five to six years. You need the time to find your way, for sure. So I'm gonna draw some names so you all can win, win, win. I would also say take some classes that are fun for you. Like I took a backpacking class, nice. okay? I mm. like nature. All right, it was fun. I literally had to go backpacking and it was a good time. So if your college offers like classes you're interested in, like mine had rock climbing, backpacking, cool. every single thing under the sun, and I took it. Cause I was like, I have a lot on my plate. Backpacking would be cool. Offsets the stress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Cause sometimes you might discover something you didn't think uh, you could I'll tell you, you could take, take one that sets you up for a job. I took a life saving in college and I went and like started down All right, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight, and it was great to have you here tonight and for the other Senior Bulldog Cafes. This has been a great series. I love that you seniors have been able to come out and carve a little time to get a little adulting information before you go out into the world. And I want to thank HCTV for being a part of this program.